Good evening. Welcome to the convocation ceremony of Franklin University Switzerland's 2023-24 academic year. On behalf of the faculty, we, Professor Zudansky and Professor Sujama, <laughs> have been helping the transition of the academic affairs in the past months. It is an honor to stand before you today as we come together to mark the beginning of an extraordinary journey for our new students and continuing students. We're also here to celebrate Franklin's continued growth and success. As we start the new academic year, we would like to express our sincerest gratitude to our Board of Trustees, led by our Chairman Kim Hildebrandt, for their passionate support of the university. And we'd also like to express our great appreciation for our president, Samuel Martin Barbero, for his inspiring leadership. So, to begin, we extend our warmest, most heartfelt welcome to our incoming students who are about to embark on this incredible Adventures Franklin journey. So who are the first year students, incoming students? <laughs> You are now part of our close academic community, a diverse, dynamic group of individuals from all over the world, united by a quest for knowledge and a commitment to changing the world for the better. There will be challenges along the road, but your travel uh, will also be transformative and filled with opportunities for personal and intellectual growth. And of course, we must welcome uh, Dave Mills, our new Dean of Academic Affairs, <laughs> who only arrived recently, so he's braving jet lag to be with us here tonight to kick off the new year. Um, we're all really eager to welcome you to the Franklin community and start working together. And we'll, of course, hear from Dave soon when we finish with the uh, introductory part. And thirdly, but no less important, to our returning students, returning students, this. and faculty, I see a lot of faculty here, and staff, staff. <laughs> Let us continue to uphold Franklin's ideals. We have created an environment that encourages critical thinking, cultural understanding, global citizenship, and most importantly, academic excellence in a supportive, inclusive community that makes this place truly exceptional. We are also very happy to welcome a new faculty member, Professor Martino Onjis, yeah. <laughs> who brings his expertise in psychology. Okay. Well, we, we all know that we are unique as an American university with Swiss accreditation in the heart of Europe. And this privileged situation in one of the world's most historically rich and culturally diverse regions represents a rare opportunity to engage with the world in a deeply meaningful way. So here at Franklin, people and ideas cross borders. Dialogue transcends languages and diverse perspectives come together to create something extraordinary as we'll see with our next speakers in the specific case of Scholars Without Borders, our program, uh, our, our program which is truly unique. Um, our colleagues, Professor Fassel and Professor uh, Wiedmer, will talk about this after our brief welcome. And Franklin's mission is to empower you to become global citizens who will embrace the complexities of our interconnected world. Through our commitment to diversity, inclusion, and open-mindedness. We work together and learn from each other as we attempt to face the global challenges that lie ahead. Okay, so while you're at Franklin, you'll be challenged to think critically, to question preconceived notions, and to explore the unknown, both within yourselves and in the world around you. Franklin's also about enriching your personal life, making friendships that will last a lifetime, discovering what you're passionate about, and developing skills and acquiring knowledge to live in an ever-changing world. <laughs> so that was a very nice... <laughs> Ready? I think he was just agreeing. 
<laughs> so take advantage of these tremendous opportunities for growth and transformation that Franklin offers. Every success, every little lesson you learn, and every obstacle you overcome will contribute to your personal and academic growth. As we begin this academic year, approach each day with curiosity, resilience, mindfulness, and a sense of purpose. So we'll close by again welcoming you to the Franklin community of learners, leaders, and global citizens who are committed to shaping a better future. Our best wishes for a 23-24 academic year filled with knowledge, also self-knowledge, discovery, and unforgettable experiences. Welcome to Franklin University, Switzerland. And so I'll we'll give the floor to professors Fossil Fossil and, and Professor Wiedemar for Scholars Without Borders. Buonasera. Good evening. Good <laughs> evening. And that's all we know. That's all we know. You're, you're, you're right. Right. Okay. All right. So to everyone who's new here, welcome. To all the returning students, welcome to you too. And it's lovely to see all of our colleagues, our leadership. It's great to be here. So we wanted to take this moment to honor a student who has been with us for five years. And he actually finished in May. But in May, he was not able to come to our uh, ceremony. And so we're going to take this moment today to honor him. So um, Tony Diada came to us from Syria and graduated with a combined major in finance and international management. Take that as an inspiration for sure. Um, starting from scratch and overcoming all kinds of obstacles, he has been a remarkable student at Franklin and flourished to complete not only one but two majors. And because we really can't bear to let him go, <laughs> we are also extremely proud to say and, and looking forward to it very, very much that he will be working for us for SWB, Scholarships Without Borders, um, and help to build up the fundraising campaign. So, so congratulations, together. Tony. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Please come up to the stage. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and we need the president. Oh, here's the president. <laughs> Should we, should we improvise? <laughs> Dean Dave? <laughs> All right, look. I'll provide you with the information. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no script. So, yeah, <laughs> Tony, on behalf of uh, Franklin University, Switzerland, I'm pleased to award you the degree of, in a combined major in finance and international management, so congratulations. students, faculty, staff, trustees, chairman, alumni, and members of the Franklin community. A year ago, I was honored to be invited to address 
the Franklin community at this same ceremony. I did it with enthusiasm and certain level of confidence of what makes Franklin unique. Over the past months, that confidence has developed into a strong conviction. I have seen firsthand that Franklin's special nature resides in its people, in its students, in my colleagues, regardless of position, of role, of affiliation or seniority. This invaluable asset, so important for any human organization, was the main reason which brought me to Franklin University, Switzerland from the US a year ago and has been a principal throughout my career in higher education. Dear students, whether you are new or not to Franklin, I'm sure each one of you can associate, and soon you will, this educational environment and your own people, your classmates, with the highest human qualities. The Franklin style is warm, is open, as easy to feel on campus. It is tangible in our faculty, staff, and administration, not only values, but actions and interactions. And rare, very rare, to find in larger institutions of higher learning. Certainly, there are other enriching elements at Franklin that are easily recognizable from above. Such are global mindset, our multicultural assimilation, and a solid interdisciplinary curriculum bolstered by the academic travel program. However, today are the people, therefore, all and each one of you who I would like to give all the merit and appreciation to. Franklin makes it possible to dive deeper into ourselves and our learning and working relations with others by being a unified community, more than a dispersed collection of individuals, egos, vanities and gurus, and to bring our institution closer to its perfect version, its perfect future and common destination, we need to continue thinking and acting as cohesive as we can besides temptations and distractions. Always a team, always as a team, less as a group or subgroup. This has been one of my major takeaways this past academic year, thanks to the Academic Affairs Transitional Commission. Not one person, no, not just one personality, but a team of excellent players has brought to us a formidable guidance and contingency plan to several critical issues at Franklin. Thus, I take this opportunity to express my gratitude to our Academic Affairs Transitional Commission, professors and administrators well known to all of you, Satomi, Clarice, Deborah, Rachel, Armando and Caroline. Please accept my thanks, my most sincere gratitude for having acted in the past months as the best possible deep water divers. You have helped to address our students and faculty's needs. You have generously shared your talents by diving into the Dean's Blue Hole, as it's called one of the world's deepest submarine sinkholes located in the Bahamas. And you have always been loyal to not anyone in particular, but to our institution through a three C's approach, collegiality, cooperation, and companionship. Now, the members of the Transitional Commission are about to come back to the surface and hand over the diving suit to a new colleague. Today's keynote speaker, Franklin's Dean of Academic Affairs, David Mills. David is a professor of philosophy, a student center educator, and obviously an incredible scholar in the field of interdisciplinary studies at liberal arts institutions very similar to us in the US. He has extraordinary personal qualities and management skills from which we will, we will all learn. As a cabinet member and a new Franklin community member, he will work with us and guide our academic model into this new phase at Franklin. But before welcoming Dean Mills to the stage, I am also pleased to add that we are very fortunate to, uh, to have another new team member joining us today. Allow me to introduce, please could you raise your hand, Franklin Allen and new Director of Advancement, Nick Neubauer, an extraordinary professional and hopefully also a deep diver who has just relocated from Jordan with his family after a decade with UNICEF. Please join me in welcoming both to Franklin.
To conclude, as it immediately came to my mind recently after a very interesting conversation and lunch with one of our Franklin founders, Theo Brenner, only exemplary people were able to lead Fleming College and later build Franklin from scratch more than a century more than half a century ago thanks to all of you students faculty and staff is our turn now not only to preserve this beautiful legacy we are so proud of but also to accompany and steer franklin into his new priorities style culture and vision thank you again david the floor is yours thank you president martin barrera and thank you to all of you and I'll add my welcome to Franklin University, Switzerland, even though it feels odd for me to do so since all of you have been here longer than I have. Uh, I arrived with my wife and our very vocal dog uh, last Friday. Uh, so I've been here just a few days. Uh, you'll meet Bear walking around campus. Justin met Bear earlier. He can tell you how cute he is. Uh, so do say hi to our, our lovely little dog. We're staying in the guest house uh, on the North Campus uh, and looking forward to getting to know all of you. I'm joining Franklin for my 30th year of working in higher education. Uh, as the president said, I've been teaching philosophy, art theory, interdisciplinary liberal arts, and serving in a number of administrative roles in, in liberal arts programs. Most recently, uh, I come to you from Burlington, Vermont, uh, where I taught and worked at Champlain College there. We had a nice life in Burlington, Vermont. Very comfortable, a beautiful place to live, and we spent the summer taking it apart piece by piece, quitting our jobs, selling our house, selling our car, selling all the things in those things, and we had a regular series of moments asking ourselves, why are we doing this? But we knew the answer each time the question arose. Franklin is a unique place that is worth being a part of, even if getting here is not easy. And I'm guessing that each of you know this, otherwise you wouldn't actually be here already. So I won't waste any time trying to sell you on the valuable learning experiences that are in store for you here. Instead, I want to use this time to reflect on some mindsets that I believe are crucial if you're going to make the most of your time here, whether that's a semester, four years, or something else. These reflections will also give you an idea of how I will approach my own work here as part of the Franklin community. So, mindset number one, focus on who you are becoming. Your academic journeys are bookended at the beginning and the end by the ceremonies of convocation and commencement. At convocation today, we mark the beginning of this academic year, and for many of you, the beginning of your time at Franklin. A little later, commencement will mark the beginning of the rest of your life of learning, beyond the formal structures of the university. So today is a good time to look forward to that other ceremony, to that other beginning, and consider who you want to be at that moment when you receive that diploma as a college graduate. So take a moment to picture it. When you cross that stage, who have you become? What have you learned? How have you changed? Who has made a difference in your life and in whose life have you made a difference? Where have you traveled? How is your thinking different? How have your values changed? What new relationships have you formed? Notice I didn't ask how many job offers you have, what your starting salary is going to be. Now don't get me wrong, those things matter in life. But to narrowly focus only on those things misses the point of a liberal arts education and incidentally generates a lot of the misunderstanding and distrust about the value of higher education today. A liberal arts education is more about who you are becoming than what you are becoming qualified to do. So don't lose sight of that. If you really focus on the first part, the second part will follow. If you approach every class, every assignment, every experience, every connection with an intentional reflection on who you are becoming in the process, I promise you'll be ready for a meaningful career, not just the starting job. You will have developed the resilience and flexibility to ride the waves of change that will come in your life. You will know how to navigate a dynamic global economy while still treating people with compassion and collaborating across cultural and ideological differences. And you'll be able to form creative connections between things that are not obvious or easy, 
forging new ideas, new products, new solutions, new partnerships. These are the skills and mindsets that will carry you well beyond your first job. They will serve you across an entire career, and more importantly, in life, as a citizen, a partner, a friend, as a full human being. The ancient Greeks had a word for this. They called it paideia. It meant the deep education of the whole person. So strive to experience paideia here at Franklin and focus on who you are becoming. Mindset number two, be an apprentice. We're gathering this evening only about three hours away from Bologna, Italy, where the word university was first used to describe and organize education in Europe, somewhere around the year 1088, a long time ago. Of course, anywhere that human beings have shared time and space, teaching and learning have happened, but the formal structures of a liberal arts university like Franklin were first established there over 900 years ago, not far from here. So first, go visit, but second, think about this. The way that students and teachers convened in Bologna grew out of the medieval guild system. In that system, if you wish to learn a craft, painting, masonry, blacksmithing, you did it by becoming an apprentice to a master of that trade. Apprentices did not sit at desks in rows trying to figure out the difference between all of the above and none of the above on that tricky multiple choice question. No, they learned by doing real work under careful mentorship by someone more advanced in their field. They learned by observing a skilled artisan at work and trying to discern their techniques. They learned by trying, failing, trying again, and by doing all of this in community with other learners. The first liberal arts students at Bologna and elsewhere followed this pattern as they learned philosophy, law, medicine, theology, and so on. So as you walk through Lugano, as you travel around Europe, you're gonna pass through structures that were built centuries ago during the height of the guild economy. Let those landmarks remind you of the long tradition that you're joining as a liberal arts student. Take up your place in that tradition as a form of apprenticeship. Look for people to be mentored by, living mentors here and now, and wise ancestors to guide you from the past. Form meaningful relationships with your faculty that go beyond a narrow and transactional focus on your grade. Take every chance to learn through experience. And above all, don't play it safe. Take risks, get uncomfortable. There's no growth without those. Also, look at your fellow students through the same lens. What have you learned that might benefit someone else? What have they learned that might help you? What can you experience and create together for mutual learning and growth? The earliest universities were actually formed as mutual aid societies by students who had come from other places to that city in Italy. They gathered together to protect each other from the city authorities and false imprisonment and to protect each other from the professors. Take note. The professors then banded together to protect themselves from the students, but we don't want to get too far down that road, right? The point is learn from each other and look out from each other. Advocate for each other and build each other up. And that's actually mindset number three. Take care of each other. The writer Hermann Hesse spent the last half of his, year, uh, his life here in Ticino. There's a museum you might visit. In 1919, following the end of World War I, just as he was moving to Ticino, Hesse was editing a journal called Vivos Voca, I Call to the Living. And in one of the issues of that journal, he wrote this. He said, we kill at every step. Not only in wars, riots, and executions, we kill when we close our eyes to poverty, suffering, and shame. In the same way, all disrespect for life, all hard-heartedness, all indifference, and all contempt is nothing less than killing. With just a witty little skepticism, we can kill a good deal of the future in a young person. Life, he says, is waiting everywhere. The future is flowering everywhere, but we see only a small part of it and step on much of it with our feet. Now, you might think that in the aftermath of World War I, with the seeds already being sown for World War II, Hesse would focus on bigger issues than unkindness, disrespect, indifference, or contempt at a small scale. But I can tell you, having spent a portion of my career studying the dynamics that would lead ordinary Europeans 
to participate actively in the horrific violence of the Holocaust, he's right to keep his focus small. The big global horrors always start small, as does every act of resistance and every movement that overcomes or prevents those horrors. The Lithuanian Jewish philosopher Emmanuel Levinas lost his entire family in the Holocaust, and he built an entire ethics on his belief. He says, the commandment thou shalt not kill is written on the face of the other. To look honestly and openly without contempt or disregard at another person and to see their humanity is to recognize your obligations to them, he believed. I hope we take this to heart as we begin this academic year. I hope we don't enter classrooms as a space of competition, a zero-sum game of honor and shame, a place where one person's future is achieved at the expense of another's, where lives are trampled in the process. I hope we enter classrooms as zones of generative mutual creativity, where sharing and building together makes each of us better. Don't be indifferent or contemptuous. Take the time to be kind, inclusive, and curious. Respect differences in experiences, in learning needs, in identities, and be curious about other people and places, about new experiences, different ideas and values, and take the opportunity to learn with and from each other. That is how your time at university becomes more than just a calculation to maximize your return on investment and increase your earning potential. This is how we become full human beings so much more and more valuable than our jobs or our bank accounts. And this leads to the final mindset I want to recommend this evening. Mindset number four, stay open. My favorite philosophical question is simply why? Ask it repeatedly with a childlike innocence and you get deep, fast. I had a friend in graduate school named Roger who had a three-year-old daughter named Rachel when he was a student. And she somehow figured out that this was a great way to stall bedtime. She would ask her father an innocent question at bedtime, like, why is the sky blue? And Roger, being a philosopher, takes questions seriously, and so he would attempt to give her a serious answer to his que her question. She would just wait him out, and when he was done with his answer, she would just ask, why? And Roger, being a philosopher, would try to answer that question seriously, and she would wait him out and ask, why? And eventually, in order to answer that simple one-word question, he would be having to explain why anything exists at all, why something is the here rather than nothing. Deep philosophical waters, the diving bell, uh, becomes necessary, right? Well, Aristotle knew how this worked. Aristotle reminds us that philosophy begins in wonder. And I believe all learning begins in wonder. It's an attitude that comes naturally to children. Unfortunately, many education systems beat this out of us, rewarding right answers and performance more than wonder, questions, imaginings, and explorations of what ifs. So we often enter college out of touch with our childlike sense of wonder. So let the uniqueness of this place guide you to recovering and expanding your sense of wonder as you start this year. Ask why, ask what if, don't accept easy answers. Stay open, stay curious about the places you go, about yourself, and especially about others. The Chinese-American writer Celeste Ng, in a letter to her child, said this, Being curious is admitting that you don't know, but also that you want to know. That what you don't know is worth knowing. That people that you don't know are worth knowing. That they have something to teach you. That learning about them, that encountering new ideas, doesn't threaten you, it enriches you. That what you haven't experienced is worth experiencing. That you approach the world as a trove of things to take in, rather than things you frantically, fearfully wall out. Be kind, be curious, be helpful. What that really means is stay open. I believe, and I am here because I believe, that Franklin is uniquely positioned to generate and reward that kind of openness with students, staff, faculty, and administrators from many different nations and identities working together to teach, to research, to learn, to create and share knowledge. So join me in making the most of your time here. Focus on who you are becoming, be an apprentice, take care of each other, and stay open. 
Thank you.